All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Case Beer webinar series. Today, this is going to be how to harness technology to streamline your law firm. And I have a very special guest here. Uh, it's Zach Herbert of Herbert Law Group, and he's also uh, a legal business consultant. So welcome, Zach. Hey, thank you. Great to be here. All right. And my name is Gabriella. I'm one of the co-founders of Casebeer. And uh, if you're a Casebeer user, you've probably heard me uh, on some of your webinars or you've spoken to me in the past. And one of the things that we're trying to do with this webinar series is just reach out to, to law firms, really mostly that want to optimize their business. And this is not a sales pitch, whether you're using Casebeer or not. The goal really today is to introduce you to some of the technology that's out there that you could use to harness and streamline some of the uh, processes at your firm. Um, so I think we're just going to take a look at it. That's what we look like, more or less. Might I say these are very, very nice slides. It's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> slide deck. All right. Uh, so here's what we're going to be going over today. Um, and so first and foremost, we are going to talk about key features every firm needs from case management software. Again, whether you're happy with what you have or at some point you're going to be looking for something, uh, the goal really is to make sure that you know what to look for or that you're utilizing the features uh, that you have at your disposal. Uh, we're also going to be talking about automating task workflows. That's a really key component, typically something that does come from your software. We're going to talk about Zapier, which uh, Zach is very familiar with, or Zapier. Right? It, is, it is technically Zapier, I heard just this past week. So that's a new thing for me. Yeah, apparently Zapier makes you happier. So that's the way I've got to remember it. I've been saying it wrong all these years. <laughs> Um, and then we're also going to be touching on Slack communication and automation. Uh, and Zach will be the one who will tell you a little bit about that. Slack, uh, of course, is a, a chat a tool. It's the one that pretty much most companies are starting to use as they're replacing their old chat communication. And if you're not familiar with it yet and you're looking for something, I definitely recommend looking into Slack. And so we'll do a little introduction to that as well. And then big picture, what? Uh, how do you know if your uh, streamlining is working? You're going to need some reports and performance tracking. And so we'll wrap up a little bit with that uh, at the end of the day. So first and foremost, case management software. Um, so Zach, I mean, when you started your firm a few years ago, uh, did you know going into it that you wanted software? Yes, immediately. I knew that if I didn't start it off right, then it was going to be completely and totally a pain uh, to to finally get over to you know software, no matter how I started. I came from a law firm that was really big, and they moved from uh, one software to another. And regardless of how you know streamlined that can be, it's still you have to you have to relearn how you're doing things on a daily basis. And so what I wanted to do is start it off right. And uh, instead of with a lot of spreadsheets or, uh, you know, handwritten notes that are stickies or anything like that. Yeah. And, and one of the things I will say from my perspective, whether it's having worked with Zach over the last few years or other people that have started their own firms, uh, it's been such a pleasure watching them bring on staff into an existing system. Um, it is really nice. If you are starting a firm, that's one way to look at it. Um, but certainly, even if you're an established firm and you're either using something antiquated or you're new to software, uh, you know, it's not too late. Uh, if you do want to streamline and automate, you know, there's no other way to automate if you don't have a backbone for your firm. Um, what are some tips you would have for a law firm to sort of choose the right software? Choosing the right software, uh, well, it's got to be something that you can understand and use uh, without having to have, you know, uh, another certificate. I know there's some software out there. I demoed almost everything that's uh, available. And some software out there uh, looks like they, they have something that comes and trains you for two weeks for you to be able to actually learn how to use it. That, in my theory of software, is that that's not... <laughs> that's not the way software should work. Software should be intuitive. It should be something that uh, you're used to or you can easily learn how to do without a lot of thought. Um, you know, it, you're going to still have to know what to click on to be able to find things. You're going to still have to learn just a little bit about the right way to do things, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be complicated. 
is what I'm trying to say. That's my that's my biggest thing about software. It, it should be it should be streamlined and efficient, and not complicated. Yeah, I mean, I think that's good advice. Some of the stuff too that I would recommend certainly is is before you start to look, really think about what your needs versus your wants are. And this is a whole pretty much could be a webinar in of itself. So mm -hmm. we'll kind of move on. But <laughs> but yeah. um, but it is something too where you know sometimes people print a list off the internet. That's not necessarily going to be what's right for your firm. Um, and it is worth related really to, to talk to someone, talk to your colleagues, other attorneys, uh, potentially, but, you know, a business consultant or somebody that can kind of guide you to and, and what might be the right fit for you. Oh, one last thing about software. One thing to try, I know us as attorneys, we're very bad at learning new tricks. And uh, I've had this one guy specifically talk to me. He's using a very old uh, piece of software that hasn't updated in a long period of time. And and he, and he says to me, well, I don't want to switch because, you know, I've already invested all this time uh, and energy into the old software. So I'm just going to continue to complain as far as I could tell about the stuff that a software doesn't do. And so you, uh, you got to you got to try and, and force yourself out of your comfort zone uh, just because you've always done it a certain way is not a right response, uh, because there are a lot of attorneys that are going to be more efficient than you and they're going to leave you in the dust, especially in the next five, 10 years. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a really good point, Zach. And and it's we have all probably talked to somebody like that, or or perhaps are one ourselves. Nah. <laughs> um, so the other point, though, when we're talking about software that I we want to make, and this was something that both Zach and I felt was really important, is that regardless of what you use, you know, if you're on a software and you think, hey, I like this, and I remember when I demoed it a few years back, it seemed to have everything I wanted, but I don't feel like I'm using it make sure you're using all the features available to you because you may be on the right solution already. You just, there might be things that you're not using. There might be, uh, you may not be harnessing the full power of, of what you're on. And some of those features are probably those slightly more difficult features and potentially the types of features that would help you uh, navigate and, and streamline a little bit better. Um, the other point I would like to make just because support something we're really passionate about here at KSphere is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, I know we have a great support system, but so do a lot of other companies out there where there are consultants that you can reach out to again um, that are perhaps specialized in, in other softwares or they outsource their training. But, uh, but, you know, if you don't feel like you're using the features available to you, by all means, you know, ask them to help you get it set up. It's not something you need to do alone. Um, and get creative. This one's really for Zach nah. because he is someone who I've been blown away with some of the stuff that he's doing on the tech side to streamline in addition to using the software. And that's really what we're featuring today. Um, can you kind of talk a little bit about what your approach has been as you've thought of sort of a holistic approach that you've taken with technology at your firm? Uh, I, I went from a, a very large law firm with lots of uh, employees to uh, myself and uh, my wife. The, just the two of us in our living room is where we first started. Uh, I got a couple of employees now, uh, but I had to uh, figure out everything. And, and I was doing literally everything. Uh, and so it really, I feel like what I did was I built it from the ground up. Every time I was doing a task, I asked myself, can I automate this in some way? Can, can I somehow uh, not spend the time clicking all these buttons or typing this out every single time I have to get this job done? And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a wealth of information out there. I'm a Mac user. Uh, there's podcasts that I listen to. Uh, there are groups that I'm a part of. And so, and I always go to a, a, the ABA tech show every year. You can bounce ideas off of people. And also I'm just a nerd to start with, or I think more appropriately geek, I think. Uh, <laughs> Slightly more flattering. I think so. I think yeah. I'm, nerd connotates some sort of a intelligence. I don't think I have that. I'm just a geek. <laughs> uh, and, and so, yeah, every time I had a task that I was doing, I asked myself, can I automate this or can I can I make this uh, streamliner more easy? And it was great because uh, I didn't have very many clients. <laughs> so I got to spend a lot of time doing this. And then I as added clients and added um, uh, staff. I was able to teach them, hey, this is, this is how we can do things. And mm -hmm. so far I've gotten great feedback from the staff because they came from large law firms as well. And they're like, this is great. 
uh, I can't believe we we wouldn't do it this way at the last place. So mm -hmm. good feedback so far. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to get a little bit more into into what some of that creativity is uh, today. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide here. So this is actually just a screenshot of a dashboard of KSphere for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, and let's talk a little bit about task workflows. So, um, you know, when you started uh, your firm, you kind of explained, of course, that you built in shortcuts for yourself to really be able to do more. But as an attorney, you kind of knows what's need to happen. You didn't need to build in task workflows for yourself. Or what was your approach when you came to designing that? Okay. So what I did was I imagined I, that I was every single role that I wanted in my law firm of the future. So it, even though it was just me, I knew that I was doing the same, the, the job of a paralegal, perhaps a legal assistant, a medical records clerk. And so what I did was I envisioned what would happen if that person was actually here. So imagine just me taking off a hat and putting on a different hat. And so every time I completed it, or I did a task or I outlined a task, I actually wrote it down. And this came from a book that I read before I started my firm, which is the E-Myth Attorney. Uh, E-Myth Attorney is, uh, there's a whole E-Myth books. I highly recommend it. Uh, it was recommended to me by a, uh, another attorney. And it just says, it's all about systems. You put those systems into place early on so that as you grow, uh, there's, there's less growing pains. And this, this, I saw this firsthand actually work. I built out a case plan, in case period it's called a case plan, where from start to finish of a case, there is at least a task for each thing that needs to get done. Sometimes, you know, it's always gonna need some tweaking and some feedback, but most of the time I, I was pretty close. And I was able to, when I hired my first employee, just take those tasks and put those on to her uh, and say, okay, now these, these are your tasks. Uh, I moved them at, specifically to a case assistant and we just started started running with it. And it was great because for me, I had less tasks. That last slide has like 72 tasks, or 76 on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it, was, yeah. it was wonderful the first time I did that. Yeah, yeah look at this that. This is a good example, I'm gonna, 76 tasks. Yeah, I'm having a, yeah. having a small heart attack right now. Yeah, just looking yeah. at it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, my perspective is that the task workflows are really key to streamlining processes. So. You know, I think that having a developed strategy too, whether you're starting out or whether you're an established firm that's new to workflows, you know, it's really going to create a consistent client experience too, which is really important because at some point, you know, as Zach firms grows or depending on the size of your firm, you know, you're going to have different teams handling that client, different intake people, uh, different onboarding people. And you want to make sure that whoever that client, uh, you know, it, whoever is caring for that client during the onboarding process, that they are all on the same page in terms of what your firm's expectations are. And that's really where that consistent client experience comes in. Um, and the other thing I really see is that it eliminates room for error. That's kind of what Zach, you're saying is that it just sort of dummy proofed it for people as they came on board, even though they knew what they were doing, they didn't know your process. Right. And it, it made sure too that you don't have a client, especially we're going to be kind of focusing on the intake process today that you don't have someone slip through the cracks. Yes, correct. Uh, you know, time is, is very valuable. It's literally the only thing I have to be able to give, uh, in, in this job. And so if I can, if I can free it up, uh, this is a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, have you seen too, that the process has gotten faster as you've built out these workflows? The actual, pro Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute, the, the case plan and some of the things that I've done, but I think in the templates too, that case Peer has, I've built out, I think at this point, over a hundred templates, uh, that I just, I've, every time I had, I needed to send another document instead of making the document again or using a shell from that form that I, you know, that I have, uh, you know, c control F, uh, mm -hmm. find and replace. Yeah. <laughs> instead of doing that, I forced myself to take the time to actually make the template. Mm -hmm. And that has been a huge time saver, even though it feels like you're spending too much time on this template. I mean, I think, you know, if it takes you five, 10 minutes to do the template, think of every time you send that template out. Uh, you're saving you're saving that time. Yeah, and that's uh, the, like template letter generation for those of you that aren't familiar with that. Most softwares these days have that feature. 
Um, but it's essentially where you can populate information from your case in whatever system you're using into a Word document. Um, and that's certainly relevant to task workflows because you're, and I think we're going to see here shortly with Zach's examples that there are going to be um, some tasks that are actually print this letter or send this yeah. letter and things like that. And the other thing, and I think you're going to talk more about this more later when we actually look at the case plan, Yes. but the task workflows are really going to facilitate training for your new and current staff. Zach already touched on that a little bit, but we'll see more of it actually in terms of how he's approaching it, which is actually, I think, quite unique and something that might be beneficial to, to you as well. Okay, so this is intake. This is uh, this is what it looks like whenever a, a, a case is created, at least in case uh, peer, the very first uh, status code that is given to that case is intake, uh, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. exactly. And so all of these fire off of that uh, when the case is first created. Uh, and it, the actual uh, task there uh, tells you what to do in the assignee right next to it, case manager. I've got two different people, the case manager and litigation assistant now. I'm zooming in on this zooming in. so you guys can all see. There you go. Sometimes it's quite small. And then if you keep going over to the right just a little bit, you can see the number of days. So that's the number of days from when the, uh, the status has changed. Mm -hmm. So after three days, the case manager is pinged with, hey, is this a brand new case or was it referred to us for lit? Because we get cases from other attorneys that haven't been able to settle the case, so we need to file a lawsuit on it. There's no need for us to go through all of the pre-litigation tasks when we have a case like that. So it tells her, it tells the case manager right then and there, hey, is this a treating case or is this a, uh, a new case for litigation? When they change it to litigation initiated, it fires off all of the litigation initiated uh, tasks which go to the litigation assistant instead of the case manager. The next one is really cool. It says if signing add the client folder or the Dropbox through the document tab, we'll go through that next. But what that does is fire off a couple of my automations that I'm going to show you. And it's just one more example of, hey, if this, then that. If this is, if we're signing the case, then add it to the Dropbox, add the uh, document tab Dropbox. And can you tell me a little bit about what the Z11001 is? Because this is something that you told me about a few weeks ago, and I thought that was just so cool. And I've never heard of anyone doing this before. And I think for large firms, this would be so key because anyway, explain it a little bit. Okay. We'll I'm working it. on it right now, so I don't really have much to show for it. But uh, what eventually every single task is going to have a number associated that Z1001 through you know whatever infinity uh, will be a reference to a to an actual template, and so if you're a case peer user, you know that if you go to a, uh, a any part of a, a client's case, any tab, let's in this one it's the client, and you go to create a new document through the little uh, letter icon, you'll see a whole host of documents there. At the very bottom, since that's why I named it Z, so it alphabetizes it all the way to the bottom. There'll be Z1001. If you click on that, a document will automatically be downloaded to your desktop that says step-by-step -step directions on how to do that specific task. Mm -hmm. my, my vision for it is that we're gonna have a one pager for each task, a little step-by-step how-to, and you could literally take somebody, put them in front of the computer, teach them how to use Case Peer, and then let them go. And there's, there's gonna be a lot of minimal um, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? You, you're still going to have to do the whole onboarding process, sure, but tiny things that you can't think about in the first week of teaching somebody how to do something, it's going to come up. And if there's a task for it, there will be a document for it. The reason that I did this too is because I have been to places and I personally have tried this uh, creating a training manual. I've seen a training manual that's over a thousand pages and a PDF. And no one can read that. Nobody I mean, does no read it. No one's going to sit down and right. read a training manual. Even if you tell them to take it home or you give them time to do it, they're not retaining it in the moment. And so they're not learning. This is really like a learn as you go. Learn as you go. I, I created, instead of the thousand page PDF document, I created a wiki mm -hmm. page for my law firm with oh, a lot with cool. hyperlinks okay. and stuff. And, you know, here's the step-by-step -step on how to do it. And so far out of two employees, zero 
employees have actually like gone and to that I thing. I would have and thought that it. the wiki would have been great. <laughs> nope. Maybe <laughs> for at least it's searchable and stuff like I that. Know. I mean, we have a wiki, so you know. Well, maybe for software developers, <laughs> yeah. maybe they would like it, but not for paralegals and yeah. This is much more functional. But now, so you know, if you your next assistant you hire. <laughs> he or she's just going to be able to, they're going to get tasks assigned to them and they're going to be able to look up by the code. How do I do this? And walk it step by step and move on to the next task. Oh, and uh, one more thing, the mm -hmm. client's birthday, as soon as oh, the yeah. new, as soon as the new case is put in there, client's birthday, uh, send the birthday email or text. It, you can, if you go farther over to the mm -hmm. right, I think oh, yeah. it tells you when that fires and that'll be on oh, the yeah. client's birthday. See, mm -hmm. that's a feature of case peer. And nice. so whenever the client's birthday is, the day before, it'll say, hey, uh, send them a birthday email or text. We already mm -hmm. have the email ready to go or the mm -hmm. text ready to go. And it's just, hey, you know, happy birthday. We're thinking about you. I hope you have a good day. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah those are those are those little touches that it's nice to see people using that in their case plans just because it does, even if they're not even a client, right? Even if right. you reject them, it's nice to be able to do that check-in. So. Yep. Um, very cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next screen. I know there's, I think more case plan that's more treating that I think would be good. To yeah, I can breeze that. Yeah. Well, I, I think I put them all on here, but the next one's going to be what happens to the case if it goes to treating. And, uh, that's if in pre litigation and personal injury, if the case is, uh, not going to be, the lawsuit's not going to be filed immediately the client is going to be treating, meaning going to doctors and getting treatment. We've got a lot of things that have to happen. Um, sending out letters of representation, sending out notices. Uh, and then what I have here is I have built out 180 days and 60 days and different firing. There's a 60 day one right there. Mm -hmm. One for the case manager, sometimes one for the primary contact, which right now is me, mm -hmm. uh, to check in on the case. Uh, I've got one on my case, you know, uh, task list that says, Hey, this case has been in treating for 60 days and it doesn't mean anything except for maybe I need to just look at it, check in on it, make sure it looks good. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently writing a, a, a one pager for me mm -hmm. to say, what do I do? <laughs> what do I look for in a case, um, to evaluate. you know, and at 60 days, mm -hmm. because I'm imagining that I'm eventually going to replace myself mm -hmm. with a lot of these tasks too. I, I, I think it'll probably be an attorney someday, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be doing a bunch of things that are just all up in my head. Yeah. And that's why I'm writing one of those training manual pages. Well, for I, I like how you have this last one here. And I think that's the one you're kind of talking about is, Hey, it's been treating for 60 days. Has liability been expect uh, accepted yet? Those are the kinds of things that you should be looking for. And there's tools I know, like at least in case where we have screens that kind of help you think about that stuff, but it's nice sometimes just have that built in directly into a task yes. almost to define, Hey, what's going to help us make a successful case. Right. And uh, we actually have a question here uh, from someone here. Are these tasks standard for every file or personalized for file type? Um, I know in, in case beer, it's possible to have it uh, be both. So you could have certain tasks that you create specific to a certain file type, like public entity or uh, certainly like, um, you know, slip and falls are going to have different, yeah, uh, different instances. There's one what's, for been dog your, bites. what's been your approach as you've been building out? Do you typically do all? I do all. Um, I do all because I'm, I do one kind of a case. I do mostly car wreck cases, mm -hmm. sometimes trekking cases. I've had a few slip and falls and dog bites, but at this point, uh, with the systems that I'm putting into place, I'm trying to, uh, specialize. I'm trying to get a niche or niche, mm -hmm. however you say that. Uh, and, but I see that in the case plan, you can do it. You can do a completely separate roadmap for dog bites. You can do a completely separate roadmap for, uh, any, any other kind of case I think mm -hmm. that you guys have. Yeah. And, and so I think again, what, what we're really looking at here, big picture with the task workflow, and we're looking specifically at the intake and that onboarding experience, especially for these sort of earlier tasks that happen when the case transitions, at least in case spirit of training for you, is that you really want to define what does this process look like? What's going to make this the most successful onboarding? And then later we're going to get here shortly into some extra tools that actually speed up that automation We're going to nerd too. out. We we're going to get geek real. Out? Oh, I'm so sorry. Geek out. I geek think. out. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, the next one might we, we might just uh, keep on going on that one, but it's just demand writing. That's the more, more of the same. So let's talk 
Zapier. 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 So I, I am sure a lot of people, I, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but of course we make software here at Casebeer. Um, you're familiar with it. I, I have no idea how. But, I don't remember, honestly. Um, can, we, can you talk to us a little bit about what Zapier is? Well, I messed around at one point with if this, then that, or IFTTT, mm -hmm. uh, which is more kind of like for fun. Uh, it's not, doesn't have a lot of business integrations. Mm -hmm. Is that another tool? It's another tool. Oh, it's just another like, tool. it's a lot like Zapier. Because I know people are familiar with that from like Word, some people have like Word templates that have that logic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe like Excel, mm -hmm. something like that. But if this, then that was super easy to understand. A great place to start, I think. And I did my very first, they call them recipes, was uh, you can set a little uh, GPS boundary around your home. And when your phone uh, gets into that boundary, you can set off a text message. And so what I did was, you know, Zach is home. A text message would be sent to my wife whenever I got close to home because she is <laughs> she scares easily. So if I walked in the door without letting her know I was coming, <laughs> She would freak That's out, you know. Great. Did she? Uh, did she like this? Uh, she hated tech it. Approach? No, she hated it. She thought it was stupid, and I had to stop. <laughs> I had to turn it okay. off. Okay, all right, <laughs> but, fair enough. But that, if this and that means uh, it's a programming. Uh, no, I think it's programming. You can correct me if yeah. it's not, but it's a programming thing where they say if something happens, then mm -hmm. do something else. Yeah. Zapier does that, but it has very powerful integrations with almost all business software that that's out there right mm -hmm. now. I'm going to show my uh, all of my zaps honestly mm -hmm. and what I use to be able to automate many of the things that I do in my workflow. And so essentially what we're talking about with Zapier is that any software you use today, whether it's Casebeer, whether it's anything else out there, as long as you're I mean even if you're on a server-based solution, chances are you could use Zapier to get certain added functionality out of that depending on you know certain triggers but really this is something that can take your automation to the next level depending on what you need and so zach is going to really share with us how he's using it um and it is something that i mean i think it's priced very reasonably i mean i don't know if it's i know if, you know there's a free version i started on that and then mm -hmm. eventually i started making too many zaps mm -hmm. you gotta pay once you have more than a few a certain number yeah. and you can't do multi-step zaps without paying for uh mm -hmm. the actual program perfect so that's something to consider so it is potentially an added cost for your firm but i just want you guys to be aware of what's out there and what's possible with this technology because if you're using multiple things which most of you are you might be using case management software you may also be using dropbox which we're going to look at you may also be you know you're certainly getting emails in your inbox and those can trigger certain things uh you know you're you, you know we'll talk about slack and that's a fabulous tool and zach's going to share a little bit how he uses Zapier and Slack too, to communicate important things throughout his firm. Um, and those are all things that, that I think are, are worth looking at. So uh, essentially Zapier is something that allows you to build your own integrations. It's got a tool set up for most powerful web apps out there. And the best thing is you don't need to be a programmer. I mean, certainly being a geek helps, but I really think it's something that anybody can learn. Um, and, I agree. And they have great resources too, right? If yes. You have questions and things like that. Yeah, videos too. Oh, that you don't go. even have to that's, read. Uh, that's perfect. Yeah. That's great for, for most of us. This is, so this, this is your zap screen. These are all my zaps. All right. I think almost us, all my zaps. Want to walk us through at least some of them or the ones sure. that you use most often? Well, hey, you can see that there's there's icons and it just one icon goes to the next icon and it goes to the next icon. So this first one is Calendly. Uh, Calendly, I use to schedule things like client meetings, uh, initial client meetings, uh, discovery meetings, uh, all sorts of client Yeah, meetings. Calendly essentially is something where you could certainly do it with the client over the phone as well. So I don't know if your receptionist ever does that, but I know typically it's something that you might email a link to right. the client and they can pick an appointment time from your availability. And so it's something we've all probably used in one way or another if you've ever done a demo or done a training with Casefear, you've used it or used something similar to it. So I hear more and more attorneys are actually using Calendly. So yes. what does that, what does this zap actually do? The zap takes the, the appointment once it's made and so puts it into a Slack channel mm -hmm. and it notifies that channel, hey, a new uh, Calendly uh, 
calendar item has been created. And then it also creates a reminder in Slack for my paralegal to make sure that she's placed it in that client's file in, in our case management software so that it's associated with that client's file. The reminders in Slack uh, work just like just like any other reminder type system. Although this one is a this is one is an automatic one. I think it gives her maybe an hour or two. Then it pops up a little thing. Hey, did you put that on the calendar? Did yeah. you make sure it was actually in Case Peer? I will just say, and I know we're going to come to Slack later, but since you brought up reminders, that's one of the things that makes it one like I think one of the best tools out there mm. for chat. If you're still using whatever that messenger is that comes standard with Office three like Office, it's just it, it's light years beyond that. And I love the reminders because sometimes I'll get a message from somebody in my office and I might be about to go into a demo or a meeting and I can't handle it in that moment, but now I've read it, right? It's marked as red. Uh oh. <laughs> and so what I love is I can actually click on that and quickly say, hey, remind me in an hour, remind me in two yeah. hours. And it's really something that we all here depend on a lot to stay on top of stuff. And I think it's just such a small feature that mm. is unbelievably useful. Yeah, and I, and I have it on my phone. And so since I'm usually running around, if I think of something, mm -hmm. uh, I, I put it on Slack. I, rem mm -hmm. I just, All I have to do is type in a message, remind me tomorrow mm -hmm. to send a thank you note. Uh, and and it, uh, it, it listens, it, you can do it in normal speak. You don't have to know, you know where the buttons are or anything. You're just right. typing into a, a chat. And also Slack is free. I want yeah. to make sure that we say that Slack yeah. is free. The reason that I switch over to Slack, I tried to do this in my last firm, but uh, to cut down on the emails. And I know that if we start off with Slack, if we build a bigger law firm and have more employees, the emails are just going to get ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And Slack is a great aggregator uh, for messages that don't have to be sent via an email. And you can catch up really quickly mm -hmm. in a discussion without having to be on one of those reply all chains. I yes. hate reply oh. all. And, you know, I still have to do it with other, you know, opposing counsel yeah. and stuff in cases, <laughs> but on Slack, the reply all, it, it doesn't bother you as much. It cuts down on the lots and lots and lots. Of yeah. Emails. It's much easier to with, uh, with Slack. And I know we're, we're veering off a little bit, yeah. but it's much easier in Slack to uh, communicate on like in group chats than it is in any other chat software I've ever come across. And so you, whether it's the whole firm or you have a specific team channel, or maybe you have someone just talking about what's going on in the kitchen. I mean, whatever it is, um, again, it is a really neat tool. And depending on what you're using now, um, it's definitely worth looking into as, as a solution for your firm. This one down here, Facebook to Slack to LinkedIn to Twitter to Pinterest. You got to pay for uh, the higher uh, Zapier to be able to do I this one. I can't so wait to hear what I cannot one. wait to hear what you're doing on Pinterest. How many steps? How one? many steps is this? Three, four, five steps. Okay. okay. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. On Herbert Law Group on Facebook, go mm -hmm. and find us on Facebook, Herbert Law Group. Uh, if I post something on that page, it will take that, post it to LinkedIn post it to Twitter mm -hmm. and post it to Pinterest. Okay. Uh, I have a Pinterest page for my firm because I listened okay. to a podcast yeah, once and they I said, you should have a Pinterest. Totally. Yeah. And I don't think anybody goes to it, but it's there. It's on the internet. <laughs> and then uh, the last one is an icon for an email. And this is really just kind of to be funny, but I have a buddy of mine who's not on any social media whatsoever. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to send you an email every time I post something on social media that's and that great. email just goes to him. Okay. That's and great. it's that's, just to be funny. And, uh, and he enjoys it because okay, he refuses great. to get on social media for some reason. You're keeping, it's a good way to keep some of yeah. your low tech friends in the loop. So but that great. could be replaced with, let's say a, a MailChimp mm -hmm. list. Cause it, it integrates with MailChimp. It could send an email blast to everybody as mm -hmm. soon as you post yeah. on Facebook and, and it does it almost instantaneously. Uh, so the next one is an, talk to me about this one. I know this is, Accepted. So we're going to get into this a little bit more, but that icon on the far left on filing accepted is an email parser icon. And this is one that you're, the, the email parsing you use a lot. So can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit, I mean, parsing, I think we're kind of getting into a technical term. Okay. What exactly is that? So Zapier has an email parsing function. And what that means is if it if, if you forward emails to a specific email address in Zapier, you can go in and you can tell Zapier, all these emails look the same. And they always have this one thing right here. 
And so you highlight that one thing and you say, I want this one thing to be downloaded every time you see an email uh, come into this email. Address. So for example, walk me through like the filing accepted. What does that one look like? We are e-file, uh, all e-filing in Texas. And so whenever we get a new filing in any case in any court, it sends us an email. It comes from efiletexas.gov. And there's always a download link in that email. You got a new filing. There's a download link in that email. You have to click on it and then it downloads the PDF document of what was just filed. So I've automated that with Slack and with the email parser. I forward all of my uh, emails that come to me from efiletexas.gov and they go into the email parser and there's a lot of them because it has to know exactly what kind it is, but it always downloads it and it puts it into a Slack channel. The next one has a little funnel there. Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, that's a look for something. Mm -hmm. So in that one, it says, Hey, if one of these emails has a uh, filing returned in it, okay. then it sends a, a quick, uh, uh thing. Uh, filing return plus reminder down at the bottom mm -hmm. says, hey, a big blast to both me and my uh, paralegal and a reminder also, mm -hmm. did you fix that thing? Because when something's returned from us, that means that they didn't accept it. Right. And you guys need to move on it quickly, we presumably. Need to, yeah, very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very cool. So this one, you're actually searching the email for specific keywords um, to actually move things. To yes. The pipeline. We have another one for notice. If uh, something's filed and it says notice in it, then I know that it most of the time means that uh, there is going to be a hearing. So uh, whenever we get that, if it says notice in it, it sends a reminder to my uh, paralegal that says, hey, you know, did you calendar it? Was there something to calendar? I think that that came about because we missed a hearing on something. I think you're on the next one. I now. am. Sorry. Let's but go that's back. Fine. Well, there's okay, a ahead. couple other. I want to talk about your uh, Dropbox. Sure. Can yes. we talk? I think that's really the next one that we're getting into. And mm -hmm. so... Um, a lot of you, I imagine, use Dropbox because I do talk to a lot of attorneys that do use Dropbox. Is this the right one to start with or no, what's kind of the best one? So I'm going to show my whole Dropbox thing for uh, when something's put in my chair. Uh, well, we can do new client folders. Yeah, like let's messages. talk a little bit that, about that. That's I, actually the next one to talk about. Yeah, and again, this might be a little bit different depending on your software, depending on what your signing process looks like. Uh, a little bit of this is unique to Case Beer, but I think it's really interesting for you all to see how Zach's approaching it because there's a lot I think that could be useful and applied in slightly different ways, regardless of what tool you have at your firm. Yeah, this one that I, I think that most attorneys do this. Mm -hmm. You have a folder that says clients, and then in that folder are a bunch of folders. Let's say you got 50 clients. It's probably last name, comma first name. Am I right? Probably. And data loss sometimes. And sometimes data yeah. loss. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever you create a new one, well, let's say you use Dropbox because I use Dropbox, uh, the business version. It's very secure. It's HIPAA compliant. And I put all my stuff in there. And when I create a new client folder, Zapier is looking at this one folder. And if it sees a new folder, then it fires off a bunch of different things. And I'll show you this entire recipe in the next couple of slides. Perfect. Should we go ahead yeah, and let's go ahead. over that? All right, we'll go ahead. The next thing that. is, uh, this is what happens in case peer. Mm -hmm. Whenever a new uh, folder or a new client is inputted, mm -hmm. if you navigate to the documents tab mm -hmm. in case peer, it'll say, hey, we didn't find a Dropbox directory because I've connected Dropbox to case peer. And it's a brand new case and you haven't created a folder yet. Right. So that's what's happening here. All I do is I click, click that connect button mm -hmm. right there and then I click save. And it's created the folder in my client folders and last name, comma, first name, data loss. Perfect. So when that happens, now the next slide will show you what Zapier does. You have the trigger on the very well, far left hand zoom side. In on this sure. For everybody. The trigger so is so new folder. See. So right. whenever so it sees you one. At, in case where you triggered something that actually created the new folder mm -hmm. in Dropbox. And so now that, that kicks off your zap. Right. Okay. So it sees that there's a new folder. And so it goes to the action. That's mm -hmm. the, what do you do whenever this happens? Mm -hmm. It sends a channel message in a channel in Slack that says a new folder was created. Mm -hmm. And it says the name of the folder. Mm -hmm. And then underneath that, another action fires. It adds a row to an Excel spreadsheet that I have. That's just mm -hmm. uh, all of my intake clients. Mm -hmm. And so you're I, using for some extra tracking. Yeah, you yeah. just to, to but apply that's neat. So to. you could add it to, and that's an existing sheet they have on Office 365 online yes, somewhere. That's Very correct. Cool. Okay. And then uh, the next action creates a folder 
Uh, <laughs> I forgot what that one is. Is this the one where it does the inside folders for it? It does the inside folders, yeah. yes. Okay, so yeah. it, it does more folder structure underneath. And this is something that's a pain point I know for a lot of firms. So I know if you're like, if you have an IT person on staff and you're using a server, I know that your IT person has probably possibly built something out that can help you when you create a new folder in a certain folder it builds that out. But most attorneys I talk to don't have this and it's a pain point. Some people will have a sample folder that they're like copy and paste and right. then rename so they don't mm -hmm. have to put in all the subfolders. But if you don't have that set up or if you're doing something like if you're using Dropbox, this is really the only way I know that you could do something like that. Yeah. Even in Dropbox business. So what we're talking about here, a really easy way for you using Zapier to create those subfolders for your pleadings and your client correspondence and mm -hmm. your defense correspondence and all that. And you can add all sorts of actions here. If you use uh, Trello, if you use, uh, you know, some sort of a list for tracking clients, uh, it, it connects to all sorts of different web-based mm -hmm. uh, applications. So just creating that one folder in Dropbox could fire off a bunch of different things. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. Or, you know, add someone to MailChimp or what, May, you know, yeah. whatever it is, it could kind of do everything all at it once. Could. Um, very cool. So let's see. And it, I like how it has this sort of action screen. You know it's working and right. can kind of move on. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and check out what's next. Oh, okay. So this is the this, oh, this is, is the is example of what happens in Slack. Mm -hmm. A new folder was created. Test test and the data loss there it was just created in Dropbox. That's what I would get mm -hmm. in Slack. And that's on the desktop on the top, but on the bottom is what I see on my phone. And I love this because I'm, I'm like I said before, I'm running around. So my phone dings and I look at it, hashtag intake, that's the, that's the name of the channel. A new client folder was just created in Dropbox. And so I know what's going on. So I know you that's... could be on your way to court and be seeing mm -hmm. something like this. And so, you know, at some point as your firm grows and grows and grows, this might be a slack you're not getting anymore. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, that might hopefully will <laughs> okay. be annoying. Yes. yes. Oh, I got yeah. so many new clients. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the meantime, it's nice to know that things are happening. And that's mm -hmm. something that, you know, you guys can all decide uh, what's what's right for you. Um, but it is certainly nice to just know, too, that, that things are moving, especially if you know a client was signed. If you haven't seen that message yet, you know something's not not happening. Right. And I actually don't have anything firing off of this. This is just to let me know. Yeah. This is, there's nothing for me to do. Mm -hmm. I probably my office is so small now. I already know that that's happening. Mm -hmm. But if I am on the road or if I'm you know doing something else, oh, I'll, I'll ask my case manager about this next time I'm in the office. What happened with that test comma test? Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Um, and, and again, I, I know I'm, I'm selling you really hard on Slack. I promise I don't get any money from them whatsoever. My, my friends joke about that too. They yeah. say that I like Slack too much. I know. Think. But I, again, there how many other chat tools are really that nice when you're on the go? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and uh, some of you may already be in Slack groups because there might be a community group or, or a attorney group that you're a part of that, that uses it. Uh, you can be in multiple groups at once, uh, and the app is really fantastic. And, and I have to echo Zach that as someone that travels quite a bit, uh, it really is a fantastic way to keep an eye on things, whether you're working from home or on the road or on your way to a deposition and want to turn off notifications and just catch up when you're ready. Uh, it's a really fantastic, uh, fantastic tool. This is what it looks like. This is oh, my this is Slack. Slack. Okay. This is Slack for my law firm. I've uh, tried my best to uh, redact uh, like lawyers should, right? Uh -huh. Any, uh, yeah. Very, and stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks yeah. like you took a permanent marker to the computer <laughs> screen. <Yeah. laughs> uh, on the left, you'll see all the channels. Uh, all of the channels have hashtags before them, uh, and they're kind of self-explanatory. Every single thing contains pretty much some automation that I have built in. Uh, the intake one is the one that we just saw. and. Uh, mm -hmm. At the top, Calendly events is the one we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Case for your blog is just a suck up for this interview. <laughs> That's it. See all, all right, reason it's there. All right. I like it. Uh, but and, I see you've got the filings new, right. filings returned. That's we're looking cool. at that right now. That's what mm -hmm. we're looking at on the oh, right-hand cool. side. Okay. So, Oh, no, no. I'm yeah, sorry. This already... is the chair folder one. Ah, okay. So Talk. we're looking at my chair. The reason I named a folder in Dropbox chair 
is because remember back when we were paper law firms and somebody had something you needed to review, mm -hmm. they didn't put it on your desk, they put it in your chair. Yeah. So next time you came into your office, you had to look at it before you could sit down. That's so, so true. So I named a folder in Dropbox chair. And whenever something is drafted that I need to review, like my, whenever my uh, paralegal is drafting a notice of filing affidavits for some, for uh, instance, she'll put the word document in my chair fire uh, from Slack that says, hey, something was just put in your chair so and the actual document. The beauty of it on. is that you don't have to wait till you get to your desk and sit know, in your I'm chair. I'm so available you can all the time. Yeah. Download it from here and view it, which is wherever you are, which is really yeah, neat. That's yeah. true. I can. Okay. And I, I look at it. You can look at it on your phone. You can look at it on your iPad. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you're at. You know that something is in your chair for you to review. And if I can't review it right now, I can always put my reminder in Slack mm -hmm. say, hey, review this. Perfect. Uh, Even if you view it and, and stuff like Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Very, very cool. Um, oh, this is the email parser. Oh, yeah. This can is what you I was walk talking us about. Through a little bit about what this is. Just, I think this is probably the last one with Zapier, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Slack and reporting. So, this one I think is really cool. Actually, you were telling me that you, for example, use this with Casebeer text messages. Can you? So, yeah. in Casebeer, we're going to uh, you can text back and forth with your clients and at a firm that's exact size. And certainly you could always do this by team if you're at a larger firm. And again, I think most softwares, if they have client texting, maybe you're able to opt in to get those by email. And if you are, you could theoretically use Zapier not only to get notifications through the software, but uh, it goes right into a Slack channel, which is really cool. That's right. And remember, if you get an email that's the same every time, it just changes one or two things, you can parse it. So and I know we got a lot of those. It's email notifications from a different app or a different uh, product that you have. You can parse that email out. And I, I didn't go step by step. It'd be a whole nother uh, thing yeah. to be able to show you how to do it. But mm -hmm. just, just know it's very easy to do. This one is for whenever I get a text message from a client, CasePeer emails me uh, that text message, the actual text of the text message and then who that is from. And it's the same email every time. It's just changes the text message content and who it's from. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I have said, okay, all those emails, I put a rule in my uh, outlook that says if it's from case peer and it says text forward it to that crazy email so address right this there. Email yeah. right here. So you'll essentially set up the parsing and then you get up essentially a code email that you forward things to. So you'd also make a rule in your email inbox. A rule in Outlook, that's yeah. right. If yeah. something comes in Outlook, then it, it forwards it. I never see it in Outlook anymore. Mm -hmm. So I don't get any of these emails. Which they only, that's really nice too. It is nice. Yeah. If I can cut down on more emails, I yeah. find a way. Okay. So then once it does that, it parses it out. What it does is it takes the name of the client and it takes the content of the text mm -hmm. and then it puts it into that Slack uh, channel and we saw earlier clients. you had a client mm -hmm. text on there. Very and cool. it just says, hey, you just got a new text from a client. And I get that on my phone as if I'm getting a new text message. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I forget and I start t texting a reply oh, in the yeah. Slack <laughs> channel. I'm like, oh, no. I'm, well, I guess your staff could whoops. theoretically send it back from there. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Um, very cool. All right. So, um, you know, you've heard so much about Slack. Uh, so it really is. Uh, they say they're a collaboration hub for work no matter what you do. And that's so true. Um, again, hopefully some of you are already using it at your firms and, and could agree with some of what I'm saying. I mean, the one thing, if you are looking to set it up, um, I would be, you know, especially if you're at a larger firm, I would think about setting up your channels as private so you can really control who has access to what. You want to make sure that you reduce noise for your staff. Um, and I do think that as firms grow or if you're already establishing it at a large firm, you know, you want to probably create a channel for every team so they have a place to talk. You want to set up some general channels or, you know, you have some of these automated channels, which are really cool. Uh, and so kind of think about really what you want out of it um, as you're setting it up because you have a lot of great options. I'd start simple and then build out things as you go. Uh, as you go along. Um, but it's an easy chat communication if you're in the office or on the go. Um, lots of cool integration opportunities. 
And you don't need an IT person to set up or manage it. I mean, I remember when I worked at a large firm, you know, anytime you had someone new come on board or someone leave, you had to be manually adding them to a, uh, to a server. And, um, you know, you had an IT person go in, add them in the system. And it was certainly a, uh, it was certainly a, a hassle. And so this is nice too, that it really is something you might still have your IT person doing it if you're at a big firm, but if you're at a smaller firm, you can control a lot of the activity yourself, which is really fantastic. It's true. And then you can also uh, integrate a lot of different applications into Slack. Mm -hmm. On the left are mine that I've integrated into mm -hmm. Slack. Dropbox, the GIF keyboard, by the way. Ooh, it's yeah, pronounced that's a GIF, must. Not All right, GIF. I mean, I don't know. Brian, uh, our CTO, would disagree. I know he's You don't says go to this. a zoo and look at the graphs. So, <laughs> uh, the GIF keyboard is fun because we use that uh, in my own firm. Whenever we get all our medical bills and records in, we send a GIF into a, a channel, usually a celebratory one, mm -hmm. because we're all nerds at my law yeah. firm, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, what you can do with the keyboard, just like you can on your phone, kind of a fun way to, to lighten the mood a little bit if you happen to be at a law firm that has a sense of humor uh you can't <laughs> some of you may not be i mean i don't i don't mean to offend now um it's just a fun way where you can share you know share you know they'll try to match the best gift to, to whatever you're feeling oh, i like, Ooh, that. I like yeah. that you pronounce it that way yeah man. um so what's uh out of curiosity what's uh Mes Ma is it mesa six yeah what's mesa six time tracker was pretty cool it's something i found because i needed to track an employee's time uh, mm -hmm. It's a very easy integration. It's I think it's two bucks a month for that thing, and all she had to do was type the slash or the hash symbol and then in mm -hmm. i n and and it would clock her in. And then she'd say hash out, and it would clock her out, and then it gave me a report every two weeks on how many hours that she worked. Very cool. Yeah. So that's great too as a small business if you are tracking, you know if you don't have the whole full ADP set up or whatever it is, yeah. a really neat way to do that. That's cool. Yeah. I haven't heard about that before. I'll have to make a note of that. Yeah. Um, and then um, hello sign, that's what you use for your contracts? Yes, contingency contracts and any other type of e-signature event is, is put into there. RSS feeds are for uh, whenever you get blogs or uh, anything else, any website has an RSS feed mm -hmm. that you can subscribe to. And then there's a lot of things that you have to pay for, like the Mesa 6 thing um, that you can integrate or you don't have to pay for. There's just, it just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, and a lot of these softwares, just like Slack, you, you can get, you know, if you're, look, if, if you're joining us from a very large firm, chances are you're probably gonna want the paid version of Slack, but for most of you, it's probably not something you're gonna need. I've been using it with two employees for like probably a good nine, 10 months now. Mm -hmm. And we're at 5,000 messages mm -hmm. and it only goes to 10,000 messages before it starts deleting the old ones. Yeah. Which, so, so you gotta that, pay for it if you want it to keep all of those old And that messages. gives you a good perspective, I guess, on the, the usage in term, and you have so many automated messages happening That's true. too. So, I do have a lot. But I mean, at some point, so let's say how, if, if it's important for you to keep chat history forever, then you probably want to pay. If you want chat history going back six months and that's fine, then uh, you know that that's okay. The one thing I will say, since we're talking to an audience of attorneys and actually I am really passionate about n making sure you don't have important case related conversations happening in chat, um, just because you want to make sure if it's something very important that it is also being captured on the case using case beer or your tool to direct notes to each other or something like that. Um, and that's more of a company policy because it's, you know, it's easy to have those conversations in person too and not capture the information on the case. So whenever you implement something new, I would make sure to, to talk to your team and, um, and talk to them about what your policy is in terms of what belongs in chat versus what should be stored in your software when, you're, when it comes to conversations. So with all of this different streamlining, so whether you are building out task workflows, using Zapier to help you know, create folders or just move cases through faster. I know you were telling me, for example, Zach, that you were able to see that you essentially can onboard a client within an hour, which I think is really the dream. And I, I think for mo many firms, it takes a lot, a lot more than that. 
Yes, because we've got those systems put into place. The forms are all ready to go from our case management software that that we fire out. Um, all the automations built in get everything completely tracked. I think, you know, you got to pick up the phone maybe a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one thing that I like the most is that I I always give the option for a client to meet me face to face. Mm -hmm. And I'd tell you like nine out of 10 times, they just want to do it all electronically these days. It's amazing. And especially the pictures, somebody gets into a car wreck, they take pictures with their phone. Mm -hmm. They can text all those pictures to Case Peer to the text messaging app and, and I've got them all saved automatically in the folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, along the lines of, you know, Zach now knowing that he's kind of down at the hour, your reports are gonna know if your streamlining is working. So as you put these practices in place, you know, chances are if you're on newer software, and again, even if you're on software that's older, kind of see what those reports are that you might be able to identify metrics because anytime you're applying streamlining measures or any other optimization measures at your firm, I do think it's really important to kind of identify where am I at now and where do I want to be? Because I would check in early on, like I check in weekly, I check in monthly and see, hey, is this working? If it's not, you also want to, of course, be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and so think about what that is. Maybe it is simply some of it may be talking to your staff because it's making their life easier and it's kind of hard to put your finger on that necessarily. Um, and then hopefully your software is capturing reporting as a whole. And one of the things that we kind of wanted to wrap up with today too is in addition to sort of evaluating if your streamlining is working, what are some of the things too that you do with some of your reports, big picture in terms of meeting with your team and getting a sense of is everything kind of working the way we want it to be working? We do a lot of reporting. Um, I think one of my more the more fun ones that we do is case Peer shows you how many tasks you've completed in the month. And we always put that up there to see who's completed the most tasks and if mm -hmm. they beat me or not, because you know, as the owner of the business, I probably <laughs> work too much. Um, but it's a fun little thing. It's to see, Hey, look who completed the most tasks this month. And it's not something where anybody's shamed or anything. Yeah, uh, but it's gamifying it a little bit. A little you bit. See, it's like a friendly competition. Yes. You don't want to, you don't want to be last, you know, I would yeah. assume. And if somebody has zero, yeah. you know, that would be a really good metric for me to be like, Hey, what are you doing every day? Yeah. Well, especially when you're incorporating task workflows and right. the expectation is that they're going to be completing these. Cause one of the things that all of you on here, if you take these things back, if you don't have workflows, you know, one of the things that does happen is that you may have staff that's resistant to change. Um, you know, Zach is coming from a unique position where he started his own firm, he knew what he wanted, and as he was interviewing people and setting expectations, no doubt, he was saying, this is the way we're going to do things, and this is the way we need to do things. Um, and that's a little bit harder when you have an established firm and an established team and uh, but it's it's really important, you know, if you're joining us and you're the business owner, look like these are the things that are going to make your business better. And that's a really important approach to take as you want to implement streamlining and, and other changes, really any other changes, new technology, whether it's software, whether it's your chat, whatever it is. Um, really making sure that you make the decisions that are best for your business, or if you're coming and you're a consultant or an IT professional that works with law firms, whatever that is, um, you know, that's something certainly that you have probably seen before and have ways to approach, but it is something to, to think about as, uh, as you navigate these new changes. Yep. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. It's been so much fun. I could probably talk to Zach all day, but I'm sure you all have better things to do at some point. <laughs> um, this is how you can find us. Uh, and uh, Zach, other than your LinkedIn and your Twitter, is there any other way that's a good way to get a hold of you if people have any other questions? Those are the best ways. Uh, and, you know, I got to say, it looks like we had our picture taken like from the same place. It totally does. It's yeah. just purely accidental, actually. Right in front yeah. of a white wall that's yeah. in your office, right? That's exactly, where, that's yeah. where the picture is taken from me. Yeah. Um, and then I'm reachable on LinkedIn and Twitter. And certainly you, you know, if any of you 
are uh, our case care clients, you can always reach me here at the office or, you know, you can always look up the case care phone number, even if you're not a client and call me. I'm always excited to talk to any attorney, even if they're not interested in our product. Um, so, uh, so again, thank you so much for taking the time. It really has been a pleasure. Zach, any, yeah. uh, any last inspiring words for our, our guests? No, no, no inspiring words except for just don't be afraid of, of change and, and try something new. Just try one little thing new. You'd be surprised at, at, at what, what it's going to do. You don't have to do it all at once. No, I mean, that's really I'm sure that was daunting seeing all that stuff, yes. but you just try one thing. Just yeah. try it. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.